Eric, aka Ugh, Nice Watch, aka Greenwich Beat Time. Yo, what up, it's Jeff, aka Number One with a Bullet, aka. Uh, fuck, how did I actually screw this up? <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Yeah, dude. All right. Yo, what up, it's Eric, aka Ugh, Nice Watch, aka Greenwich Mean Time. Yo, what up, it's Jeff, aka Number One with a Bullet, aka Top of the Pops. DJ Samson. <laughs> Tell me this is the real. <laughs> Sam, what's happening? Yo, I'm. I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> no, seriously, like, I'm. I'm really honored to be doing this. I'm kind of gassed. I'm kind of <laughs> like, you know, it'll take me a minute to get cocky, but like, yeah, it's no, just, listen, I'm gassed to be here right yeah, now. Yeah, Thank yeah. you guys. No, seriously, we are. This relationship with Sam goes back like ten years, just about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We were looking at emails like yeah, not yeah. too long ago because um, we wanted to do a sketch back in our sketch days, and the first thing that I told Jeff I wanted to talk about the other day was the sketch that we did the other day. So it's taken us ten years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you had this idea to talk about like the you know the English language, the Queen's you know English. Versus, you know, the Americanized English. Mm. And uh, the the reaction has been amazing. Yeah. I mean, like, the amount of crying faces, you know, put on Instagram is just overwhelming, right? Right, and that's the only metric we use. That's right. <laughs> but I wanted to know, because not a lot of people know about you, where do you get your sense of humor from? Um... Uh, Wow, this is going to be a deep one today. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, because really, you have a great sense of humor. I mean, Are you Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a bit of everything. Like, you know, I've got Jamaica in my blood, Sierra Leone. I think, like, my great great grandmother was Jewish. Is like, that? Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shout, I'm shout probably like an eighth, something <laughs> like that. We'll take and it. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, you know, my dad's English and. My family has been over here for generations, so mm -hmm. like, and I think I think my humor comes from Manchester. It's a grimy city. It's always gray. It's the realest city. Like people are respectful because you know anything can happen, kind of thing, and everyone just keeps it very very real. But I think out of that grimness and the gray and the cold, you know, the humor is like what everybody's got, and it just channels through. I think you know it's from my family, from my hometown, basically. I didn't understand a word you said. <laughs> 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 you know that that happens to me in the U.S. all the time. Is it, really? it actually happens to me over here. Like I was, I was at, um, I was at an event the other day, and I said to the guy, he's, he's some, I think he's a Russian guy or something, and I was like, yeah, two bottles, all right? And the guy's like, what? I said, two bottles. What? What? And I'm like, are you taking the piss? Like, I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no. I said, you know, I'm, I'm about to spend good money up in there. Yeah, like, yeah two bottles. The guy who sat next to me is from London. He says, two bottles. Ah, oh, two bottles, sir. Well, like, <laughs> happens to me all the time. Like, so that's why I was like, with the sketch, we, you know, we should do something that reflects like, what's going on out here, the slang out here, you know, and the way that we talk. Regardless of color, race, or whatever, there's a slang in the UK or in London that everybody talks. So when we talk about lock-off, when we talk about tickets done, like, you I'll know. go on. <laughs> Patterning, thing. yeah, <laughs> like we're patterning this today. Yeah. You know, we're doing good. You, you know what lock off means, right? And, and now, now we know what lock off means. <laughs> yeah. Um, I heard this is going to be a lock off. Yeah, it's a lock off. It's it, a lock. Oh, it is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's a lock. -off. Tickets are done. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets are moving. Yeah. <laughs> You're still confused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. I I do see a couple paintings in the audience. <laughs> so. Paintings. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so you're originally from Manchester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how far away is that from London? It's like two hours on the train. Yeah. So would you make it down to London a bunch when you were growing up? Oh, listen, right. When I wanted to get put on, I was grinding hard, right? I was, I'd, I'd, I'd hustle to make the money to get the train ticket down to London. I'd spend the day down here like hustling record companies, trying to get free records. Like, it was, it's pathetic. Like, I'd come down just to get free records, basically. Right, right, right. And then I was trying to get my foot in the door, then I'd get the last train back. Like, I knew the train timetable inside out, like, everything about it. But I was, I was down here every week, you know, and I was, 
at the time it was a real regional divide. It was like, you know, London is like New York, and then being from Manchester was like being from Boston or somewhere uncool. Now it's cool. Now it's cool to be from out of London. But but back then it was like, and I and I had that determination. I was gonna get put on. Like you were gonna fuck with me whether you like it or not. And I kind of still got that today. Kind of. Thing. Well, okay. So Manchester's a city that, um, you know, we we, we we were like looking into it before, and it's like, you know, New Order is from Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Right. Happy Mondays. Yeah. Stone Roses. Right. Um, who else was from there? Boxy Malone. <laughs> I am DDB. Right. Brand new kid called Just Bang Code. Amazing. Right. Like, it's mad talent from up there. Yeah, the Smiths. Different styles the of music. Smiths, the Smiths, right? I don't so, fuck with that. Yeah, no, no, right. Same, same. <laughs> Agreed. We were invited once to a Smiths karaoke party, and we definitely did I not I don't know. know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know Robert? That conversation would be wasted on me. But yeah. <laughs> but, so it's not known as, like, a rap you know, at the epicenter of rap or whatever, and you're growing up there in the 80s, how does rap find you in Manchester? My brother. My brother put me onto it. And my brother, like, it was just one day I walked into his room. He had um, records like Slick Rick, Public Enemy, LL Cool J, Dougie Fresh, and I was just in awe. I was in awe of the covers. He's wearing Sergio Tacchini tracksuits. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, it was like a new world. Like, all of a sudden, he just switched. It was, like, it was like a mad cultural invasion. That's what got me into it. That's what caught me. And then from there, I just, got, I just consumed the music. I got into the electro albums. I you know, started buying albums myself. And then that's how I got into it, basically. Um, were you listening to, like, pirate radio? Or, I mean, like, were they yeah, playing yeah, on radio? Right? Like, there, was, there was no pirate radio, so I did it. <laughs> It was. I started out, you know, I was, I was like a hip hop dancer. I was like kid from Kingdom Play at the high top, everything. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. through doing the Running Man for hours, and not well, realizing <laughs> it's not cool. And then, yeah. And then I was like, you know, this club needs more records. I'm gonna bring them next week. Like, and it was the most disrespectful thing you can do is bring <laughs> records to a club. Right. Yo, can you play this as well? And that, and play that. <laughs> and then I was like, fuck it, I might as well start DJing myself. And that's how I started DJing. Well, what did your parents think? I think when, when I graduated from university, there's a picture of me with my dad, and he's looking at me like as if to say, it actually paid off. <laughs> 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 it, was like, it was like, seriously, because you know, my parents were like, turn that shit down. It was always that, it was yeah. always, which makes you right. want to turn it up even louder. Well, they were Smiths fans. <laughs> 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 nah. <laughs> Michael Jackson, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, it was like, you know, I did my degree. Like, and they, they weren't, you know, I didn't get pressured by my parents to do a degree. I just wanted to do it because no one else in my family had done it. And I just thought, fuck it, do a degree. I can focus on DJing at the same time. That's the only reason why I did it. Well, and what was the scene up in Manchester like at that point? Oh, it's dope, man. For real. There's a lot of gangs, a lot of violence, um, a lot of students. So there's a lot of club nights, and it was like really weird because I knew all the G's, I knew all the guys in the hood and everything, and I grew up with most of them. And then, but I knew all the students who came down from London, and it was kind of, you know, I was, I was kind of fusing the two, doing parties and stuff. And that's, you know, God bless ACSs. ACSs are called African Caribbean Societies. It's within each university. I was tapping into them. I got my own fan base, my own audience. And yeah, I just had a great time, man. It's amazing. So wait, so I'm sorry, just to just to you know, sort of zoom out for a little bit. How old are you when you decide to be a DJ? Um I guess I think I, I, 35. To, <laughs> <laughs> it was you know the year was the year was ninety two. You know, you know it was the year was when the Pete Rock and CL Smooth remix of Mary J. Blige came out, because I bought that shit and it was expensive as fuck. <laughs> so at that point... And you I were like, like, I should buy a second copy and DJ. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, at this point, I was buying records to do parties. So then that's like the professional thing. And I, was, I was, wasn't getting paid. I was doing house parties. I was just like, let me DJ. I was like, oh, you, you need a DJ? I was like, oh, you're doing a party? Do you need a DJ? I was like, I was doing everything. I was doing 
any excuse to DJ. Like it wasn't about the money. It was just about just just the practice. It was about the knowledge. It was about the appreciation of the music, the culture. It's, I really wanted to do it. But on a purely like, how do I do this? Um, and maybe this is like you know I I just I just don't know. But you know, did you have like did you lose your arm before this? See, you're jumping questions there. <laughs> that's that's like like that's the fast forward thing. Like you can't say you can't say that without asking how it happened. Well, you I do want to know how it happened, but I wanted to know like you know I know, I know but you can't jump to that. Like, I that's can't. like <laughs> no, nah, because if this was you know most people this is the thing. I know thousands of people. I've met thousands of people. Very few have the audacity to say what happened. Most of the time, it's only Americans that say, yo, what happened? And I'm like, it's a long story. Oh. I was in a restaurant last week. I was in a Nando's, actually. Hey. hey. See, no, now you're just bragging because we haven't been wait, to wait, Nando's. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So this girl, like, she's looking at me now. And she's like, what happened to your arm? I said, it's a long story. Yeah, but what happened? I was like... It's a really long story. I'm not going to get into it in Nando's. And, <laughs> and her boyfriend was like, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Like, and he took her off to the till, like, as if to order food. He's like, what the fuck are you fucking... <laughs> I, what the fuck are you fucking doing? And they she have came a great she came relationship. Over <laughs> no, no, no. She came over to me. She said, I'm really sorry until I offended you. And I, I, ain't, I ain't offended. Like, I'm not... If somebody asks, I'm not like, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. Yeah. Oh my God, how dare you? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I'm scared to talk about this shit. Like, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather people ask, but don't just do it in a way where it's like, yeah, I, like, I see you wearing a yellow hoodie today. It's patter. That's nice. That's what happened to you, am. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I was like some life changing shit. That was like some shit where, you know, I could have died. So. There's a scene, there's a setting, there's a respect, there's an understanding that you got to have. And even for me, if someone's gone through some shit, I ain't going to be like, yeah, you want to drink? Oh, by the way, what happened to that? Why, why have you got one eye? Or why are you fucked? Oh, why have you got that fucking... You got to have respect for someone as a human being. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to find out about that and you're asking me, did I have my other arm before, you got to ask me what happened first. What happens sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> Let me begin. Yeah. So basically, I was, I was born with an illness called lymphangioma. And it's where the blood cells in my right arm were weaker than the blood cells around your body. So imagine your body's got like a force field and it's blood cells that keep out all the shit, all the germs, all the illnesses and everything else. Everyone's got it. I had it, but for some reason... It was weaker in my right arm. For some reason, it just wasn't there. It was like a one in a million thing. No one else in my family's had it. I've got three sons. They haven't got it. It's just, there you go. One in a million. Take that. All right? So when I was growing up, my arm was fucked. Like, if I got a cold, I had to go in hospital for weeks at a time. I had, like, 11 major operations. Like, I know scars and pain very, very well. And... What happened was, I was like 15, and I went swimming, and I came out, and it was cold, so I caught cold, and I was fucked up. I was ill, coughing up shit, everything else, weak as fuck, like, just fucking ill. Like, and then I go to the doctors, and the doctor's like, oh, hello, um, I'm afraid the illness has got really bad this week, and we're going to have to take your arm off, or you're going to die. It's fucked up, right? Yeah. It didn't bother me. Because I've been through so much pain, I was like, cool. It's, it's a good way to stop it. I was like, thank you, you know. So I'd had, I'd had operations that lasted for four hours. And then they come out, and I had skin grafts. I had, you know, shit chopped up, fucking blood transfusions, everything. Every kind of fucking operation I'd done. When you have your arm amputated, it took... It takes 30 minutes. And it was so short, 
when I came out of the theatre, I was like, you're taking the piss, just fucking get it over and done with. I didn't even realise they'd done it. But they had this thing called phantom pains, where if you had your leg taken off, it still feel like it's there because the nerve sends messages to your brain that it's there. So it's like, if someone hasn't got a leg, they could imagine that they're kicking something, even though it's not there because the way that neural pathways are registered to your brain. So that shit happened. I got over it. And, <clears throat> you know, it's that thing like, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now, I got, I got told, kids are the cruelest bastards. Like, fuck kids, man. <laughs> cruel as fuck, man. They are. They're, e they're evil bastards. They, they, they say <laughs> shit. They don't give a fuck what they're saying. They don't care about your feelings. They're like, so I had people like, you're never going to get a girlfriend. And I'm like, okay. You're never going to, you're fucked. You're never going to be able to do anything. Well, follow-up question. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. So I'm telling my story. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, I never got gutted. I never got depressed. Never felt sorry for myself. Hold on, never done that, right? But did you get a girlfriend? Many. So, <laughs> so, so basically, you gotta keep that. <laughs> but I, have, I have to take that bit out. So, so, <laughs> big up my wife. So, so, um. She's, she, no, she's the one. She's the one. So, yeah, she's the one. <laughs> so, um, so basically, what happens is, it kind of changed me, and it, and this, and this is why I fuck with Dizzy Vascal because he he went through a situation and he was like, and I didn't clock what it was, how it affected me, and he said, when you go through some situation in life, it does one or two things. You either internalize it, stay at home, feel sorry for yourself, or you go all out and do everything, everything, everything you want to do. So he went through a situation, he went all out, did everything he wanted to do. I did the same. So I can do anything you can do. Better. <laughs> no, I mean that. I mean that. That's not no, this. And by the, like, by the way, I mean no. Shit. And by the way, yeah. I've heard that. Like... Yeah. Yeah. No, like we were talking to somebody yesterday and they were saying how like you you can I mean, I don't want to skip ahead, but yeah, you know, go. So you graduate from university, you've already been DJing. How do you know that that DJing is the path for you and it's not in some other form of entertainment? I didn't. But I loved doing it. Like I loved I love everything about it. I loved I saw Terminator X on stage, like, I saw the way he was controlling the crowd and he had a big fluorescent X, like, and he was the backbone of the show. I was like, I want to do that. Like, I've yet to get my X, but one day when I yeah. get it, you can all be like, oh, yeah. That's <laughs> and, you know, seeing Jam Master J, you know, and just, it's, for me, it's all about, you know, some people get into hip hop and they're, they're in it for the lyricism. I, I get it, because I came from, like, the dancing side of things. For me, it was like, the music, the beat, the momentum, the pace, and all of that, and that's that leads you to DJing. So I love playing music, you know, and that's it. So, so when someone says to you, "You'll never be able to do that," I'm like, "Fuck that! I do everything, like everything." I tweet it, do everything because nothing can stop you. It's that I, I DJ better than most DJs with two arms. Facts, and I'll tell that, you know. <laughs> And that's it. No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. And and that and that's purely because I practiced. That's purely because I was determined to do it. Like I don't want sympathy. I don't want oh feel sorry for no, hold on. I don't want pity. Like I don't like people opening doors for me because they think, oh, no, I can do that shit. Thank you. Like I do that shit. And with the DJ inside of things, you know, it's about perfecting the mix, it's about doing the right cuts, it's about doing all of that shit. So just go hard and just do everything. So when you're saying, did you DJ with your other arm? No, I didn't. Like, I learned to DJ with one arm. Like, I mix with my mouth. I don't mix with my nose. People are like, some people, oh, man, he scratches with his nose. No. <laughs> I use my mouth on the crossfader. Like, so, yeah, that's how I do it. There's no, your answer. No, well, okay. So, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and she was saying how, because, you know, 
there is a, a, a whole ocean between us, right? Like we only know so much about um, UK hip hop. We only know so much about um, everything that's been going on. We know that Drake invented it. That's that's, that's what right, happened. Yeah. Yes. So we all agree on that. But um, you know, I I didn't even like. I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't know that you had lost your arm until fairly recently. So that's that, good. No, because but that's, that's no, 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 no. Because I didn't want to be a fucking freak show. Exactly. No, I'm not. Like I'm not, not trying to be like, hey, book the one on DJ. I know someone who did that, and they regret they did that. Like, and I told the person because he went through an accident, and I was like, you don't want to do that because you don't know. You've got. I've had years to come to terms with the situation I've got. I've lived with it from being born. You haven't. And yeah, he kind of, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't, I'm not in it for pity, sympathy, or anything like that. I just, yeah. If yeah. you know, you know. If you don't, oh well. Yeah. So what? But I'm just saying that that's a testament to you and your skills and and everything you've done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just do it. I'm not. It's not. I just do it. Right. So I, it's not testament. I just do it. Right. So let's get into how you did it. So you're. So you graduate from university and you're still living up in Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. What's down in London that's so appealing to you that makes you jump on that train? The scene. Where? London. Whereabouts? Like, like, not the whole scene. Like, this is the thing. Manchester at the time, there was no internet then. Like, internet, like, internet changed everything. Like, you, you could live in Aberdeen and be more on point than most people in New York or LA. You could live in Newcastle and you got, you got a better wardrobe than someone in New York, you know, just because of the internet. But... You know, I was hungry. I used to read this magazine called Hip Hop Connection. And all they ever talked about was London people, London DJs, this, that, and ever. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, I, was, I had the crazy intent. I was like, I'm going to come down there. I'm going to fucking show you. I'm going to fucking do this, right? Not, I'm going to take over. Just, I'm going to come down there. I'm going to do this, and you're going to fucking respect me. Like, I had that crazy intent, and I still got it to this day. I don't, I don't know why I got it. It's just like it's just there. So, what's the first door you knock on? First, what? Sorry, where's what, where's the first door that you knock on? Oh, so I was doing mixtapes, and I was I was selling them. I was doing really well in Manchester. So I just, I just, I just did my research, found out all the record stores in London. I turn up, I'd be like, Yo, I need to sell these mixtapes. And you know, and people look at you like they didn't. I said, no, 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 just put them in, and it I was, I was nice and everything else. Red Records, um, Wild Pitch Records, Uptown Records, Major Flavors, all of those stores, none of them exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a real shame, like it's tragic. But and then they started selling, and it, you know, there's two things that people respect in the world, whether it's London, New York, or whatever. It's money and success. If you got money and success, you're respected. So you go into record shops where it's the moodiest people behind the counter. I mean, they're <laughs> fucking ignorant as fuck. They look at you like you're shit. Right. And the fact that you're from Manchester, even more look at you like <laughs> shit. But when your mixtapes are moving and you're selling them, they're like, and you're collecting your money, yeah, fucking respect me. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, you know, I didn't get help from no one. I wasn't part of this scene down here. I put myself on daily. And we're talking mixtapes like, you know, records, exclusives, and yeah, yeah, not yeah. working, not mixtapes like they are now where it's nah, like, nah, nah, yeah, nah, nah, yeah. Nah. I, I, used, I used to fly to New York just to get records. Like, I bought a bigger house purely for my record collection. Who are some of the, who are some of the people who hooked you up with records in New York? Um, a, lot of these, a lot of these guys aren't around no more. <laughs> like, but, you know, it's all the labels. You know, I'd go Def Jam, I'd... Yo, the first time I met Jay-Z was a Rockefeller when it was downtown and it had the office. And on John Street? Yeah. yeah. And I, I just went on there, I was like, and I was like, yeah, I'm here for vinyl. And Dame Dash and Jay-Z was just stood there in the office. I was like, yo, you from London? And I was like, yeah, 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 I'd stay for vinyl. And I was just like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Dame Dash was asking me loads of questions. I was like, yes, <laughs> and what? And then I was getting in the lift, you know, I got, you know, like when you get a bag of records, you're like a crackhead, you just run out, like, <laughs> like, like you've achieved something, like, yeah, I've done it, I've secured the bag, <laughs> secured the bag, run. And then, so I was about to go in the lift, and, he, and then Jay was like, um, you know, yo, that's my sister there, because she was getting in the lift, he was like, look after her, I was like, okay, I'm just getting in the lift, it's all right. And then I was getting in the lift, he was like, yo, look after her, right? I was like... Fucking hell, I'm only here for vinyl, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I'm not here to look after your family, you know? So, 
And then, yeah, that, that was it. So it's like everybody who was starting, you know, it's, it's great time, man. It's like, it's, you know, it's bumping into people, hooking up with other DJs. Some of them showed you love, some of them didn't, but fuck it, it's cool. Who were some of them? Talk about who didn't show you yeah, love. Yeah, who Let's didn't show you love. Let's air it out right now. Let's go. Nah, they're not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Are any of those guys still around? I mean, Stretch Armstrong, he, he looked out for me. Um, yeah, he's still around, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Like, big old Stretch, Bobito. Um, Tony Touch hooked up with him. I brought him over here to do shows as well. Um, How are you meeting these guys? Just just calling them up, cold calling, just like yo. Just I just turn up in New York, or turn up at an office, just like yo, I'm here for vinyl, like. And it's kind of like it's like the international password, isn't it? I'm a DJ from the UK, not even from London, from Manchester. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, where the fuck is that? Don't worry. Like, it's near <laughs> right. London. Yeah. Right. Anything with a British accent sounds better. So it's not yeah. Paris. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the UK. Yeah. <laughs> it's about a two-hour train ride. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So you're getting these records, you're putting these mixtapes together, and then you come down to London to sell them. Yeah. And they're selling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So your name is good. Yeah. Does that get you more gigs? Yeah, but what it did was, I wasn't, I was, I've never asked for a gig. I've never called up a promoter. I've never <laughs> called up a promoter and said, "Yo, can you put me on?" I've never asked anybody in my life to put me on for a show, right? Because my thing is, if my reputation isn't attracting that shit, I shouldn't be doing it anyway. So, and if the phone's not ringing, I need to be doing more shit, basically. So what happened was. Well, I'm talking really cocky now. Like, you bring it out of me, man. You bring it out of me. So cocky basically, or cockney? Cocky. Yeah. yeah. Confident. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm working with students in Manchester and I'm doing these flyers and designing the flyers and fly posters and I'm doing like all the work, all the grind and everything else. And then I was hitting up labels for vinyl. So I was like, yo, give me some posters. We'll give them out. Like CD singles came out. So yeah, we'll give these shits out. Whatever you want to do. I was just a hungry guy. I was like, yo, need some shit promoting. I've got, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm large out here. I'm doing pirate radio. I'm doing parties and everything else. So I was like, I was always on the phone. Like, hook me up. Send me product. This, 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 that, and the other. And because of that, that that's what got me into labels. Because, you know, it's to succeed in life. You gotta get up an hour early, go to bed an hour later than everybody else. I do that standard. Yeah. Easy, without even thinking about it. Like I'm from Manchester. That's what we do. Yeah. We work hard. Yeah, give no, it no, up no, for no, that. No, no, that. No, no, yeah. clap, <laughs> right. clap for that. Clap for that. My my only fear when I moved down here was another mank moving down. Cause I was like, no, I was like, like there's this kid that was I was like, oh shit, it's gonna rub me out of the city. Like, cause we, we work hard. Like, down here, like, people take it for granted. Like, there's a real lethargic attitude, you know, because London's the capital of England, the seventh biggest city in the world. It's an amazing city, but people take shit for granted. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm here to grind. I'm here to establish myself. And you were, you were doing street team stuff. Was there a name yeah, yeah, yeah. for it? What's that? Sorry? Was it known as street team work, or? How do you mean? Like, did they call you a street team? No, basically, so... I was running Manchester, like with street team shit. Yeah. I had sticker. Cam- I was like, I was expert on sticker campaigns. Like, <laughs> like I took, I took because I used to tag and do graffiti and everything. Like, I knew how to get up with stickers. So, you know, I'd I'd take great pride in the sticker campaigns. You know, and I I kind of use sticker campaigns to promote myself as a DJ. And so I was like to labels, yeah, if you want me to do that shit, I'll do that shit. Yeah, paint the city, it's cool, no problem. <laughs> so, um. I was I was hungry. I was on the phone. Hey, shout out to Lee Khan as well. Lee Khan knows exactly what I'm talking about. He's yeah. here today. Yeah. So so I was hungry as fuck. I was just like, you know, my thing is I'm not here to party. I'm here to work. I'm here to work and get vinyl. I'm here to be a DJ. I'm here to work with artists. I'm here to fucking do shit with my life. Now, a lot of that is because of the situation with my arm. Is that drive? Like, it's really weird. It's like. I've always read Marvel comics, right? And DC and all of that, massive fan. And then, um, you know, most superhero comics, like, you know, they go through some kind of transformation and a change and everything else. And I wasn't trying to save the world. I was just trying to win. I was just trying to be like, but I got the drive. I got this fucking insane drive to just do whatever I want to do. So when I moved down here, I was like, oh yeah, finished university. I got for the job at Sony, set up the first street team ever. Yeah. So I moved down. And I was, I was, I just had this insane drive to kill it. Like, 
because I got a job at a record label doing street team shit, other people was getting jobs. I was like, I want to wipe out all of you. Like, these are my streets. Like, the nerve of me to come down from Manchester and be like, these London streets are mine. I'm going to do this street over here. You can do that shit over there when no one's going to see it. <laughs> like, I was cocky as fuck. I had a team of guys with me. They were cocky as fuck as well. They were just students. You know, it wasn't... You couldn't do that in this day and age. Like, it's crazy, but, you know, there was a situation where the Americans came over for the Mobos and the whole bad boy street team came over with Puffy. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> like, no, seriously, Soul Guy and Rob Love. Like, they, they, they took down our shit. I was like, this is outside, um, um, what's it called? The, the arena um, in Kensington. And I was like, no, 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 no. That doesn't happen. <laughs> I, I, I told my guys, take all their shit down, put all our shit back up. And I said to the bad boy street team, I was like, you're going to do nothing. And they looked at me like, these are all big guys. And yeah, I said, yeah. like, this is Rob Love. And Rob Love's like, looking at me like, who the fuck are you? And I said, <laughs> I said you're going to do nothing because this is my city. Man. This is my country. You don't come over here and tell us what to do. These guys have got a job to do and we're going to do it. Wow. And they were like, yeah, but we got to do this for Puffy. I said, you can do over there. I don't give a fuck about Puffy. It doesn't mean shit to me over here. So, and, and that's, that's what I was saying. It's like, yeah. I can't believe I was saying shit like that. But I was, I didn't come down here to party. I didn't come down here to make friends. I just came down here to work. Yeah. Like, I was, like, if you ever you trying to set up a business, hire Manx, yeah? They yeah. work, like, <laughs> they'll outwork anybody. And that, and that was it. It was like, I took pride in the work. And Sony starts to recognize the work you're putting in? Oh, they loved it. Yeah. Like, the streets were lit. Who were some of the artists that you were promoting? All right, Destiny's Child. Yeah. Because what happened, there was a time when radio wouldn't play them. They weren't fucking with black music at the time. Here? Nah. Yeah. Mainstream radio didn't want to know. So I was like, well, what do you do? You work with the pirate stations. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's get Beyonce to do this interview over there. Let's do that over there. And da 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 da. I had them going into pirate stations. I had, you know, when I eventually moved from Sony to Universal to do the Def Jam thing, you know, we took. We took Irv Gotti to Brixton. He was doing interviews at pirate stations, like in the hood, tower blocks. Wait, let's talk about Destiny's Child for a minute. This Hold on, is, like this is... You know, have you seen Corrupt FM? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like that shit. Like, oh, I had my God. <laughs> ludicrous shit himself. <laughs> 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 but I was just like, if you, wanna, if you really want to like, get records sold out, you got to meet the people and the DJs who are doing shit. And, that's, and they were in basements, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, tower blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but Destiny's Child, that was the four gold... Yeah, group, the original right? lineup. Yeah. 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 And then you brought them through HMV, is that right? Everywhere. Like, we, we, was, we, had, we was following them around the country with stickers, poster boards, all of that shit. Like, was it weird watching, like, four girls who were so young be so professional? They weren't in the beginning. They were not? Nah, they used to argue and everything. Oh. <laughs> but, but then what happened was, you see them develop, like, two trips later... When they're doing interviews, they point to each other as to who's going to do the answer first. So I was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. I saw the development of it happening. So, Man. Yeah. Who else? Who else is over at Sony? Um, Nas, Lauren Hill. And shout out to Lee Khan. He was there for the Lauren Hill interview. Like, she, was, she was doing interviews at pirate stations when she was pregnant. Like, yeah, it's deep. Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Did that have as big a reaction over here as it did in the States? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the shit. It yeah. changed everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Game changing. And she, she showed up on time? Yeah, she... All right, this is the thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. She was running behind schedule because she, um, she was heavily pregnant, right? And she was trying to do everything else. She was trying to do all these interviews. And she said she was running four hours late. And it wasn't her fault. And she was like, look, I, can't, I need a break. And she was like, but if you come back in an hour, I'll do all this work that you need me to do. It came back in an hour, and she did four hours of more promo. She's amazing. She's amazing. It doesn't explain why she doesn't show up to some festivals, but that's fine, yeah. She's been through some shit, though. Yeah, no, she really has. Yeah. So, okay, so everything's going well at Sony. Did you think that that was somewhere you were, where you were going to continue climbing up the ladder? Right, did you want to be, like, the executive vice president at some label? Nah. Yeah. I, want, I, I just like the music. I just wanted vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted vinyl. That was it. <laughs> Sony was popping at the time. They just acquired loud. I was like, oh shit, Wu-Tang vinyl. Like yeah. everything. I was like, I had books. I had 20,000 records. 
I had boxes of shit, copious amounts of vinyl. 20,000 Where do you put all that? In a garage. I bought a house with a garage purely for my vinyl collection. <laughs> Just Where do you like park the, the most car? Kanye West thing I've ever heard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So you have that you have that vinyl and you're playing gigs around the city? Around the, around the world. Around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to Germany, South Africa, like France, different places. That's I was selling I was selling mixtapes in France as well. Like that, I was flying over to Paris to drop shit off, collect money, come back. My God. So that yeah. New York trip when you went to go meet, you know, the guys at Rockefeller, that was just like a little jaunt over to uh, to New York? I funded everything myself. Like you, when I was at university, I was working, I was selling mixtapes, I was signing on, I was doing some illegal shit. I was good. Like all these students bitching about being broke, I was paid. I was like, I'm going to New York next week. Like you know, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I was just like, I've always made money. I've always worked. Like I'm not. I've never, you know, my parents weren't rich. I never, you know. And that's it. I just have always worked. So if Sony wasn't the future for, you know, a career, where did you go next? Well, and how did you know it was time to leave Sony? Because um, you get to a point where you're like, so I did street team shit. And then I was like, I need to step it up because I've done it. Like, I, you know, it's, it's how many times are you going to fight bad boy? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and then, um, you know, all these other labels were trying to set up street teams, but they're getting the wrong people and they should have got Manchester people. And that that would have, you know, that would have helped them. But <laughs> I was just like, so and then I was like, and then my friend who I was working with, she was like, she, she got to a point as well. She's the one who brought me, a good woman called Mariam. She's the one who brought me into Sony. And then she was like, you know, it's time to move on. We should, you know. So then, you know, um, we got wind that they wanted to set up Def Jam in the UK. And, you know, there's things like, I, I really learned about positive thinking. If there's shit that you want to happen, you will it into happening. So we were like, well, they've got to get us. We've got to be there, you know. We've got and then she made some moves and da da The next, next thing, it was like, they brought her over, they brought me over. And then... I was like, yeah, I want to do club promotion. Fuck street team shit. I've done that. I want to work with club DJs more. Even though I was doing it, I was just like, just let me get some more money, just deal with the DJs and everything else. Started there, I was working Javu, Jay-Z, Kanye West, everything. And I was working because at the time, they weren't, they weren't popping like they are now. They're not like, now they're like mega stars. Now they're like icons. Back then, it was just like some street shit that the mainstream didn't want to acknowledge. And for me, I was like, she's fucking amazing. Like, you know, I was like, all oh, this vinyl. I was like, it's like a crackhead. I was like, I want more vinyl. And, <laughs> and then I was like, hang out with Jay-Z, take Kanye around, do promo with Kanye and all of this shit. Like, so that, that was like a real dope time. This was like 2003 and everything else. And then um, I discovered that, you know, trying to do Def Jam in the UK, they didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the dream that I thought it was because not everybody shared the same vision. So, not everyone at Def Jam or not everyone here in London. Execs, let's blame it on execs. Okay, All right. So, <laughs> let's blame the label. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, because I was like, well, if you're gonna do this properly, you need to sign Dizzy Rascal and Wiley. Like, if you're, you know, you want to set up that, you need. You to said do this it. in in two thousand and yeah, three, two thousand and three, yeah, yeah. And then it was like. It was like, yeah, okay. And then, you know, some of the American guys that brought me in, I was like, yo, we got to do this. Like, you know, these are the guys, if you were serious about setting this up. Well, Sam, we'll back you, but if you really want us, and the person who's going to hear this knows exactly who I'm talking about. And he was like, if you want us to back you, and if you want me to go to the chairman of Universal and explain to him that, you really want to do this deal and you believe in... I was like, fuck this, man. You don't want to do it. You don't want to back me. Fuck it. I so was like, this is bullshit. They wanted you to do Def Jam UK but not sign British artists. They just... They just... They didn't understand it. Like, now, if it was a different situation, you was like, you've got to sign, 
you you've got any any UK artist who's popping off right now. You got to do this deal with any name an MC, think of an MC, and she said, oh yeah, okay. Now they do it because now they see it's profitable because it's been done. You've seen the success of Skepta, Stormzy, J Hus, etc. Now they'd feel confident in doing it. But at the time, it you know you got me by myself saying these guys are the shit. You need to sign these guys and. I don't think they believed me. <laughs> you, the label didn't believe you. Yeah, let's let's say the label. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the evil well, entity. What made you believe in Dizzy and Wiley? The music, like the lyricism. Like you know, I had a demo of Boy in the Corner for like a year before it came out, and I was like, this kid's got five albums in him, minimum, and that's a lot of vinyl. <laughs> 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 and um, he had this track on the album called Round and Round and the way he's, he's flipping tenses about a girl and a guy in a relationship for me I, for me that was like something Naz or Rakim would do like the way that the concept and the flow the way he put it together but it was done in an English way English slang, English accent it was uniquely English because it was like it was grime, but at the time, it wasn't called grime because people didn't really know what it was. It was just like garage MCs flipping what they're doing. Like it wasn't, it wasn't. Hey, this is the start of grime. It, right. It, but it was. You just nobody realized it at the time. What did the city think? Because obviously, like they look to you, and you're at the forefront, and you have this opportunity now. Not just like starting. So what do you mean the scene? Was that no? I mean like. Oh. The city, like oh, the city, like London, looks at you, and you're at the forefront, and you have this title now, not, and you're teaming with not nah, just any nah, label, nah, but nah, Def nah, Jam. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, are, are a lot of people coming to you with like mixtapes, being like, "Yo, fam, yo, fam, <laughs> sign me, fam." <laughs> so, somewhere, but this is the thing. Dizzy, Dizzy was Dizzy and Wiley already had the streets popping. They were selling white labels like twenty thousand units. Like they, they were good. Like they didn't really need to do the deal. It was just me being over enthusiastic and wanting to work with them. So. It was like, so people, you know, this was like the garage scene at the time. So people were like, yeah, this is different. Like what Dizzy and Wiley is doing is different. Nobody still kind of figured out to call it grime yet, but it was grime. And then, but I liked what Diz was doing with Fix Up Look Sharp and Just a Rascal and stuff like that. So because I got Wiley to do a remix of Ludacris, because we were trying to break Ludacris out here, he did the, um, the Roll Out remix, yep. which was, was dope. And then that's how I met Dizzy and then... Um, Dizzy and his manager gave me a demo of Fix Up Look Sharp. I was like a crackhead, like, yo, just give me that. I'll play it on the radio every week. And I had my one extra show at that time. So I was playing Fix Up Look Sharp for like six months before anybody even knew what it was. People thought I was mad. <laughs> no, seriously, pe like hip hop people were like, that's not hip hop. That's car crash music. In the country? Yeah. People, that's not hip hop. Like all these hip hop purists, yo, fuck you. Because I was like, this is a dope lyricist. This is a hip-hop beat. What the fuck are you talking about? Does that remind you of what goes on now with what people call mumble rap? Yeah, fuck them as well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, like, good music's good music. Like, I don't care, like, what's in fashion or whatever. If it's dope and it works in a club and my listeners like it or people on the dance floor like it, fuck it, I'm playing it. But with, with Fix or Look Sharp at the time, it was like, it was disgusting to see... MCs, DJs, journalists, slag it off. It was like, I got laughed at for playing it. That made me want to play it even more. I was like, I was even more, like, because I didn't need anyone's seal of approval to tell me what's right. Like, I got my own opinion. Fuck everybody else's. I don't care what you think. If you, if you don't like it, fuck you. And that's, that's how I am. It's just... Were there any DJs in America hitting you up and being like, what's yeah, hot over there? The, I've got to give a big shout to Matt Sanzala because he got it. He was one of the earliest. He was one of the first people who adopted grime in the US. And we used to trade tracks and shit. He'd put me onto Paul Wall, Grit Boys, all that shit from Houston. He put me onto that shit early. And he was, he was like the ambassador for it. He, he got it and understood it before anybody else. Like LP got it before anybody else as well, you know. Um, but you know, shit changed. Do you feel? Do you feel that it was a missed opportunity even now? Now that now that nah, you guys no no no, it was meant to be, because look, 
I've done street team shit, right? I've run around putting up flyers, posters, stickers. I fuck with DJs, pirate DJs. If you if you was a DJ and not getting respected, I'd help them. All right, fuck it. DJ at this Lauren Hill party. I know you can tell it raves. Fuck all these DJs on Kiss, Radio 1. Like, I'd have the street DJs doing all the label parties and everything. So, for me, it was like, you know, I, I, I don't know. It was just... I just got on with it, you know. I wasn't, I wasn't, I was getting the results because shit was selling as well. Like, if you heat up the streets, you get the mainstream. Like, labels to this day, they, they'll sign, you know, a rapper or a singer and they'll try and circumnavigate the street. Big mistake, always, always fuck up. They still make that mistake to this day, so. But did London still feel like the, the sort of, like, stepchild to American rap at that point? If a, if, a, if a label like Def Jam wasn't willing to back them? It's kind of like, fuck them. It really, it really was. It was kind of like, you know, I, I didn't end up signing Dizzy, but I ended up DJing for him and toured the world with him for eight years. Maybe that's how it was meant to be. You know, I learned shitloads touring with him. You know, we've we done some amazing shit, like crazy shit, like stages worldwide, every continent. Amazing after parties. <laughs> we'll stop there. So, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like you do all of that. And for me, maybe that's the way it was meant to be. Maybe that's, that was my path. Maybe if I did sign him, I, I would have fucked it up. Imagine that. Because like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was, doing <laughs> I was pissed at the time. I was angry. And I was cursing people out. But... At the same time, I wasn't experienced. I, I wasn't experienced enough to push something through a label to be able to talk to the marketing people, the radio people, the press people, and the branding team, and galvanize a team and get everything together. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to do that. So everything happens for a reason. But instead, I taught the world for eight years and had a ball. So. Yeah. And didn't show up to work. What's that, sorry? And didn't show up to work at the uh, record label. So. I didn't understand you, sorry. It's fine. <laughs> no, honestly, I didn't understand. It's fine. It's a great joke that I made, and I think we can all agree that it was a great joke. <laughs> what was the first time uh, meeting Kanye West like? Um, he kind of fronted on me, because it was it was the Mix Show Power Summit in Puerto Rico, and um, and I had seen these two guys stood out, you know, it was in this massive hotel resort, like where you just see DJs and artists walking around, they take over the hotel for the weekend. Amazing events, I miss those, like great place to network and everything. And then I walked past these two guys and I was like, and I seen the Louis V bag. And I went up to so I was like, yo, you're Kanye West. He's like, yeah. You know, like, and then I was like, yo. I play your shit all the time on radio in the UK. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, it's fronting on me, but it's Kanye West. And then he was like, yo, Don, give him a CD. As if to say, get him the fuck out of my face. So he gave me that, <laughs> he gave me the Academics Mix CD. Yeah. And then I was like, I got this, but it's Kanye. You know, I was like, because he was the savior of hip hop at that time. He was like, you know, what he was doing with the soulful samples. He was like, boom bap, it was everything and that. So, but then I realized he was trying to get me out of the way because he was waiting for the RZA to walk past. And he was trying to, and then he walks up to RZA like, yo, RZA, I'm a big fan of your work. So I was like, <laughs> oh shit. I was like, I was like, everyone's on the grind. So I was like, okay. And then the first time he came over to U the UK on promo, he was with Dame Dash. And um, it's when he had the big red jacket with the fur around the hood and everything. And it's, this was like weeks before college dropout dropped. He's like, yo, Semtex. And I was like, oh, this is a different Kanye. I was like, <laughs> I was like yo, Kanye. Like, <coughs> and we went to the house that Damon Dash lied about saying he bought, which we knew he didn't buy. But, <laughs> and we went to that house. And yeah, I was eating croissants and donuts with Kanye West on a Sunday morning. Amazing experience. And we were just talking about college dropout. And I was doing, I was on some nerdy shit. I was talking about, you know, the demo version. There was different versions flying around the different tracks at that time. I was like, yo, that's the drums on this. Like, yo, da 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 da. And it's like, word. Like, you know, just, I was just talking nerd shit, man. <laughs> it was like, who the fuck is this nerd? So, like, what did you think at the time of him? Did you think that he was going to be what yeah. he became? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You, you could hear, like, when I first heard him, 
rap on the bounce, you know, and Blueprint 2, yep. I was like, this guy's the shit. Yeah. Like, and then this is the thing, as a DJ, when you're really into something, you tell everybody, yo, have you heard this? Yo, this, this guy's the shit, you need to watch out. This guy's got, you say it on air, you say it when you talk to people on the street, you just tell everybody, like, you bore people to death. Yo, there's this guy called Kanye West. You heard him. You listen to Blueprint 2, the bounce. Yo, he's not credited, you know. Yeah. He should have been credited. He's yeah. not credited. Totally. Like, so, and then the black label came out of two words. That shit was incredible, you know, and through the wire, like all of that. And then he kept coming over to do promo every time he was doing interviews or connected with him and everything else. He was mad. Those were like dope days. Did Dame remember you? He never liked me. Dame and Dash never liked you. Why do you think that was? I never kissed his ass. No. no I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't fall for that shit. I, wasn't, he was, I was respectful. But I wasn't like, yo, damn, I was never that. And but you know, I know he didn't like me. I don't I know. Yeah. I know, I know why as well. This other shit. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think when he Big old Dame though, like, yeah. what he did. What do you think when you when when he signed Victoria Beckham? You know, it's one of them times when you're like, oh. <laughs> he's like, and then he was like, I'm gonna show yo, if I say she's hot, I'm Dame Dash. Okay. But Kanye, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so Kanye, I've had college dropout. Like, it was always like that. And it was like, you know, respect to Dame for doing what he did with Kanye and believing in him when, you know, other people didn't. But, you know, he, I don't know, you know, it's a shame what went down, went down. You know. Yeah, but Victoria Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> I don't acknowledge that. Like, you know, like, there's certain parts of history, like. Sorry, we're huge Spice Girls fans. We're huge. Um, I don't know those things. <laughs> I, I don't know that shit. Well, that's no. a real problem because the next hour is all Spice Girls talk. That's right. <laughs> so your relationship with Jay-Z post... Um, well, it's not, really a, it's not really a relationship. Like We're not drinking partners. Well, or anything uh, like that. Like, <laughs> but, you know, it's like there's a thing that every time you, know, you see him, it's like, ah, we meet again. <laughs> and it's like, we're both doing something right, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. It's like... And then, um, and then, you know, I interviewed him a couple of times, and then the most inspiring Jay Z does the best interviews, by the way. He's because it's just jewels of knowledge. You just you just learning psalms of information, like. And when I was still working at Universal, and he took over Def Jam, we had to do a label meeting. So I was like, so he comes in and he's wearing a suit and I'm like, I'm like, I've sat there in a meeting like, and then I'm like, oh shit, it's Jay-Z, oh shit, <laughs> the boys could see me now. <laughs> you know, just asking questions for the sake of it. Like, so Jay, how do you feel about, the, you know, like, no relevance whatsoever, just to look important. Right, like, right, 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 yeah. right. But, you know, I was sat there watching him and it hit me the... It was like, he was there as the president of Def Jam. And he was there to promote the Black Album. And then he was there promoting the Fate of Black DVD. And then he was there um, pushing his clothing line of Selfridges. Then he had the vodka or whatever it is. That's Armadale? Too expensive. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then you'd know if you guys are drinking buddies. And then, <laughs> and then, and then he was pushing Tierra Marie and Rihanna, or, you know. Right. So I counted ten hustles, and at that moment in time, I realized I'm not doing enough. It was a real epiphany. I was like, I need to fucking do more because I used to always feel guilty. Oh, I'm doing the label and the DJing. I'm doing the radio. Nah, man. I was like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not doing enough. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, work harder, Semtex. You know, yeah. it's like <laughs> you're from Manchester. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm slipping. Yeah, but it, it's just amazing. He's inspiring, man. Like the guy. You know, you know. I know not everybody's a fan, but fuck it. I'll say he's the greatest of all time. He is the greatest of all yeah. time. Yeah. So that relationship, the Kanye relationship. Um, oh, do you want? Do you want a, another drink? Yeah, go on. Then. From your drinking buddy. Manchester. But speaking of questions, um, people who ask questions just to sound important, that's like our MO. Right. But like, how do you um, prepare for an interview? I don't. I don't. I don't write down questions. Like, I don't read biogs. 
I don't go to the Wikipedia page. I don't ask the same shit that everybody else asks. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm not interv- if I'm interviewing you, I'm a fan, and I know about your shit and the shit that I want to know. I can't do shit for the sake of it. I don't do the promo ones where I'm lining up with ten other DJs and hey, so <laughs> you st- you know repeating shit for bio. Hey, so you grew up in yeah. <laughs> Well, no, you no. started with "I heard you." So, <laughs> so I, d- I just, I just get straight to the point. I'm a fan of the music first yeah. and foremost. You know, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a nerd. I want to know how it works. Like, how, what, how did you get to that point? And that, that's, that's not. You don't need to write that shit down if you listen to the albums or right. the music. And I think, look, we, we, we were talking about this earlier for us. Like, I think what we do well is we just listen. Like, if you mm. listen to what the person mm. has to say, yeah. you'll get a good interview, you know? It's kind of like, some moments is like therapy as well. Yeah. Like, there's some, there's a couple of artists where they've just talked and they don't even say anything because they got shit they want to say and they trust you enough to talk to you about it because you're not going to ask no stupid shit or try and set them up. Like, I don't do the stupid shit. I don't do the... Then hey, why are you so doing this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> this, this isn't stupid shit. Like, <laughs> this is the, like... But, you know, you, you get... You know, I, I don't do the shit for views. Fuck that. I don't... And, that, and that's, that's why I got the Drake interview. Cause yeah. Exactly because of that. Well, okay. So... Drake is somebody who a lot of people claim to be, you know, there from the very beginning, right? Yeah. And everyone, everyone all has their like story. It's like Woodstock, you know. Everybody was there. Yeah. Um, for you, you were really on Drake early. Yeah. But how does he come to your attention? Two dope boys and not right. Hey. Not seriously. Yeah. Like, those guys. Those guys. You know, when I was I was blocking hard, when I asked you to add me to the blog role, like yeah, yeah. like God bless that golden era of blogging, man. Two thousand and nine <laughs> to two thousand, that was an amazing era. Like, yeah, so much shit. No, it was. I really by the way, mean that. Shout out to you because there's there's a lot of people who want to stay in one part of the game and never want to like take new technology seriously. Mm. You are not that guy. Mm. Like, there's a lot of people who are just, and then there's other people, and we won't name them, but who want to claim mm. that they, like, invented the internet, <laughs> you know? They're like, they're yeah, so Al digital. Gore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who but, are you coming at? <laughs> but, for, but for you, you really took, you know, blogging and, and the internet sort of wave very mm. seriously, right? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was discovery. It was like, you know, it's it's not, you, you know, the the, the mixtape game was kind of dying, and everything has a moment, you know. So mixtapes, discovering new music, I right, got oversaturated and it got fucking boring, and DJ shouting all over the shit. So then you got people writing about music and posting tracks, and you could download them. So, you know, Bun B, I think the the opening the opening thing for me was Wale's Nike Boots remix. That was yeah. yeah. I was like, oh shit, what's this? And then downloaded it and I played it on my show and I was like this for me that was like yeah it was is you know it was it was the best way of sharing music you know and it wasn't you know it got a bit nasty you know with people getting shut down and everything but when it started it was just like fans you know whether it was journalists DJs or whatever and you know people sharing music so if if someone posted the Wale remix and Nike Boots and he isn't signed and then I play it on my show, and then hundreds of thousands of people hear it, millions of people hear it. Like, it's a like, slight exaggeration. <laughs> so that was English humor. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's like, so basically it's like, it, yeah, it's a good thing, right? Yeah. Well, okay, what was your favorite uh, download site of, of choice? Zippy Share. Eric's trying to get you arrested. User Share. <laughs> Mega no, that, Upload. That's, yeah. N- no, that's, that's. Was Z Share? That was one, right? Z Share was dope. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to um, um, Media Fire. That was good. Was it okay for you? <laughs> Look, you're not working at a label anymore, but you nah, were still a DJ. I was. Oh, you were? Yeah, I was. Yeah. And you still downloaded from these sites? Yeah, oh, standards. my God. Why? You heathen. <laughs> it's not. Because, because I, right, so say I'm working at Universal. Which you were. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like, see, that's American humor. <laughs> 
Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, yo, you know, there's a new track by da 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 da, and then the people, like, what? Like, I didn't, I didn't know about this, and then. The international departments always the last to know about what's going on. They were like, oh, we didn't know about this. <laughs> and then the main departments were like, oh shit, we've got heat in the UK. Press the button. That's how it works. So it wasn't, it was never like, who the fuck's got this? What it happens like, when they press the button? Like, the spend. Like, fly them out to the UK, promo plan, da 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 da, let's work. Yeah. It's like, it, it changes everything. And that's what I'm saying. That like the UK breaks a lot of shit. The UK, like a lot of US labels, managers, artists, they send the shit here first to get our UK buzz. Like what we do online here, what we do on radio out here, all the stations. Like, so what do you think England meant to meant to Drake's career? It's pivotal. It's definitely pivotal. You know, it's to every artist's career. Mm -hmm. Like UK is the gateway to the rest of Europe. We have the keys. Like if you don't pop up in the UK, you don't pop up in Europe. Facts. So SOBs is the is the uh, the place to go to in New York, right? Yeah. If you want to like get on, that's where yeah. you have to kill. Yeah. Where's the place here in London? Birthdays are X O Y O. Who'd you see there that killed? Pretty much every. I mean, I did. You know, with with my arrival night where we got it's over for the first time. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> We always sell out the nights. Like we did the, the first night we did was Joey Badass. That shit was fucking incredible. Yeah. Like it was because the first time an artist comes to the UK, it they make the mistakes. You see the flaws. You see the you know the raw emotion about realizing that people overseas know shit word for word. It never happens again because what happens is the artist by the next show go to a bigger venue, so it's not the same. A year later, when they're mad successful, you're getting the run of the mill show that everyone else gets. Yo, Scotland, I mean, London, like, yeah, you're alive. You know, you get all of that shit. And then, and then it's just not, oh, you get the marketing plan. It's not the same. So for me, the first show is the most important. So any show that you see a new artist that birthdays, X or Y or Garage or wherever, those shits are the most amazing. That's what I value over everything else. So, I mean, you've been, <clears throat> you pride yourself on being early on a lot of guys. I don't pride myself on it. I'm just. I mean, early. you are, but yeah, no, nah, no, nah, but, but I'm not like, hey, I'm the early guy. Yeah. Like, I just am. Right, I'm the early like, guy. Yeah, but um, but who have you been laid on? Anybody? No. <laughs> no, seriously. There's, you know, if if I don't like it, I don't play it. If I have been late, <laughs> no, 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 and I've and I've. Shout out to Giggs, and I've talked about this with Giggs, because he was like, oh, Sam, you was late on me. I said, no, nah, I wasn't. I said, it's just disgusting how many dick riders were on you. Yeah. So I just waited. I was just like, second album, I'll connect. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, no, that's cool, that's cool. Because so, <laughs> I was like, it was, you know, when I hate when people come up to you, yo, it's the new Jay-Z. You know, <laughs> and then collectively, everyone's like, this is the new Jay-Z. Like, and then the media, this is the new Jay-Z. And it's like, like, I don't, I'm like, all right, you guys, you guys do that over there. Mm. All right, good luck. You do that. And I'll let me discover some shit over here that no one knows about yet. Or let me find some shit that my listeners might like. And, you know, like, you know, and that's it. And it's not, that's not a disrespect thing. It's just, it's just like me playing an artist that everybody is collectively creaming over. That doesn't benefit anyone. And I'm not trying to be part of the crowd. Yeah. Who's How somebody? Much? Who's somebody that you took a, like a big chance on it, and, and you think it really paid off? Everyone. I know that's a shit answer, <laughs> but it is because because everyone who supported is great. Like I'm not, you know, like all right. I'm not gonna take credit for like being early on Chance the Rapper. No, because he's great. Early on Drake. I take credit for being the first to fucking get that interview way before anybody else because I knew he was gonna do it. So, and I knew someone who was working with him. So, and I knew he was coming over. So I was like, I need to get him on my show. Because the mixtape was, you know, thanks to Narvite and Two Dope Boys. Yeah. They exposed them so far gone, mixtape was on the way. And so I was like, and the shit was popping. The tracks were popping. And I was like, nah, I need to get him on my show. And nobody knew about him then. Nobody, nobody gave a fuck about him. So he was supposed to come on my show on a Friday night. This was like seven years ago, right? So... Um, 
And then, yeah, he's supposed to turn up at the show. He doesn't turn up. So I get on the phone. I'm like, yo, you better fucking tell your boy. You don't do that out here. You don't come to this. You know, I, I don't know where I get this. Like, you know, like <laughs> Manchester, like I, right. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. like I'm going to do something. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yo, I'll take his passport. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Never come to the UK again. <laughs> so I was like, I just did a little spazzing out. I'm like, and I think it kind of freaks people out because I'm, yo, you better fucking make sure you need to fix this. Like, you need to fix this. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. I've been playing his music. You don't fucking do that. And I just repeat it, and people are like, oh, this seems serious. <laughs> like, so they were like, and then I got the call, they were like, no, 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 it's cool, he's going to do it tomorrow, he couldn't do it tonight, but, you know, can you go to the hotel? So I was like, all right, cool. So I go to the hotel, and then it's there, and the hotel's dark and gloomy as fuck. And he's <laughs> like, yo, like, Jake's like, yo, I'm really sorry, man, like, I was with Rihanna last night, and... I was like, all right. I, was, uh, <laughs> I understand. You, know, you didn't need to come on my show. Like, you know, like. So I was like, all right, look, it's a nice day. Let, let's do the interview in the park. Like, no one's done anything like that. Um, it'll be cool. So we did the interview in the park. No one knew, no one had a clue who he was because no one knew who he was. Like, you know, I said to the BBC staff, like, yeah, I'm going to do the interview tomorrow morning. Do you want to come? I'm like, Nah, you do that, Sam. You know, that's what you do, isn't it? Like, you know, these unknown guys, you know. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. So I go there with my cameraman, shout out to Twitch. And then, um, yeah, we, we do a dope interview, walking through the park. And then, um, and then I interview him again a couple of times throughout the years and everything else. And then when he does the More Life tour over here, like the Boy Meets World tour, sorry. And then um, in February... February, I get up, I go, I go to the toilet. This is the detail, right? So, <laughs> so I'm sat there like half asleep, like sat on the toilet. Check your DMs, you know, <laughs> as you do. It's more important than your bank account. And I see Drake, and I'm like, ah, someone's fucking with me, like <laughs> fucking DMing me, you know. And it was like, yo, I was watching the video that we did, you know, seven years ago. I'd really like to revisit that. Da 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 da. I was like, someone's fucking with me. Like, <laughs> Jake's megastar now. He ain't going to do that. So, Did you then, respond uh, LOL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, all right, cool. And he's like, come to the show tonight. I was like, all right, cool. He's like, here's my number. Okay. Uh, and I was like, and he goes, give me the names. I put them on the door. Da, 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 da. So I was like, wow. I was like, wow. This is, um, I was like, wow. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, now I know how girls feel. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, that sounds weird. Like, Yo, Drake, Drake the MV, though. <laughs> Drake the MV, though. Like, look, look. <laughs> DM'd me, give me his number. I'm like, I got Drake's number, you know. Like, and then, so I go to the show, and then um, shout out to all of his team and everything else and he comes off stage bigs me up while he's doing the show as well like it's, 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 you know it's a great look and then I go backstage and it's like it was like it was straight to business he was like look it isn't easy for me doing interviews in the US like people distort shit and everything else and I was you know I was in the hotel last night I was looking at videos online and I was seeing what you was you know what we did seven years ago I've, it'd be cool if we revisited that so and he says, I fuck with you. You don't do the bullshit and da 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 da. And he was like, let's do it again. So I was like, cool. So for two weeks, I was waiting. <laughs> I was pathetic, man. I was like <laughs> looking at my phone for more DMs <laughs> like, for two weeks. And then, and then Future was like, yeah, we're going to get in touch soon and da 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 da. This, 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 that, and the other. So I was like, all right. And then I kind of thought, all right, it's not going to happen. Cause, you know. And then... Um, and then, um, and then I get a phone call. It's like, ready to do it now. Get to the hotel now. Okay, <laughs> like, get the camera team, everything else. Like, it was like, it was like a mad mission. Got to the hotel, and it was like, then the pressure comes because it's like, you ready? You ready? Like, we're ready to do this. Ready to do this? Oh, I've just been waiting two weeks. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, and then yeah, it was, you know, and that, that's that's one of them moments that you always hope happens when someone's big and they're like. They remember the work that you put in, and it was like, yeah, it's dope. It's interview of the year. Pretty amazing. Nah, it went it went Time Magazine, um, 
Entertainment Weekly, is an every major news website. Did they make you hold it? What's that, sorry? Did they make you hold the interview, like not put it out for a while? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it kind of... So, um, nah. <laughs> so, so, you know, we did the interview, like, speedy edit, quickest edit ever. Right? And it's an hour long, so you know how long it is to edit videos. So, yeah. so send it over to prove it, like... And then they were like, yeah, the interview's amazing. We're putting it on OVO Radio tonight. Okay. <laughs> I'm on the BBC. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit, you know. Unorthodox. It got me in a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's Drake. What am I going to do? I'm not going to say no. You can't air our interview. Like, right. right. This is stop the BBC's it. property. <laughs> My property. Yeah. yeah, I recorded it. It's on my equipment. Yeah, so it's not had nothing. It had nothing to do with the label. Nothing to do with any organization or anything like that. He reached out to me direct. It was just between me and him. So yeah. it's kind of, it was that. But what I learned from this situation is it. It doesn't matter about the platform. If you if you do something dope, the world sees it. No matter what network platform you're on or whatever, you know. We it, talked about how much um, London means to Drake. Hmm. But how much does Drake mean to London? He, he, he should be knighted. He should. <laughs> Am I right? Wrong? Yeah. Yeah, he's so mad love to the UK. What, what he's done for gigs, Skepta, Dave. Dave, yeah. Georgia, me, yeah. et cetera. You know, he's, he's done it. He's, he's done what no other US artist has done. It took a guy from Toronto to put us on worldwide. Jay-Z could have done it. Kanye could have. Well, Kanye's done it with different people, but like... To put UK rap and grime on a pivotal album when you're at the peak of, not even, I wouldn't say he's at his peak. Could you say his peaks? I don't think his peaks. Right. What was the. Um... He's, in, he's in uncharted territory right now for any rapper. Oh, yeah. What, what'd, you, what'd you think when Kanye did All Day? Yeah, it's dope. Yeah. Anything Kanye does is dope. Were did you, were you, you on, stage? on stage? Yeah. Or, or were you on stage? <laughs> nah, I was in the audience. Were you really? And it, yeah, that shit was amazing. Could you feel the heat? Yeah. yeah, it really, nobody nobody expected that. Nobody saw that coming. And I think, you know, he, for Kanye to do that, that was dope. I think it was even better that he did the show a couple of days later, Boy Better Know Good Music. That mm-hmm. was like one of those were you there moments. Um, and he's, he's worked with UK artists before, you know, he's worked with Estelle, he's worked with other people. And, you know. What are other, like, you had to be there moments for you? Good Music After Party. That was like, this is the thing. He did the O2 Arena, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, everybody come to the after party, right? But I don't think anybody heard him. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I heard. So I was like, okay, I'm there. <laughs> so there's this little club upstairs, like in O2 Arena. And it was there. So obviously, I had to hook up. And as you do. And um, English humor. <laughs> and, then, and then basically what happened was, um, everyone was there. Like Kanye was there, obviously. Big Sean, Most Def, Nas, De La Soul, um, Green Lantern, DJ Craze. Yeah, but name somebody that on, people have heard of. Hold on. <laughs> Will I Am, David <laughs> Albarn, Kid Cudi, and me. And there was about 10 other people there in the club. Crazy. 10 people. And then they had this mad freestyle session where they were passing the mic. Mad. That was mad. Were phones out? No. Wow. Because it, it wasn't like that then. That was before, I think, even 3G. I mean, that was like still 2G. <laughs> this was like, this was like, um, this was like 08. This was just before 808 dropped. Wow. Like, and it was me filming. <laughs> I used to go everywhere with a camera. <laughs> I, was like, I used to go everywhere with a camera and a microphone in my back, just in case. Like, you know. Can you imagine how bummed Kanye was after saying, like, yo, after party, you coming? Yo, everybody come through. And 10 people show up? <laughs> I, I, I don't think anyone cared. Like, no one, it, was, it wasn't that. Nobody cared. It was just, like, it was just cool vibes. It was I like, heard for him. That's there, was, there was more artists than people there. Yeah. So it looked busy because it was all artists. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And then... Um, and then, yeah, it was, it was dope. I taped the whole thing. It's great. What, what, do you, what do you think means more to an artist in 2017? A dope interview by a DJ or a DJ playing their record a bunch of times? I think what means more to an artist is fan feedback than anything else. 
I think there's a rush, there's a rush that artists get when they reveal something and the timelines go mad. I think that means more to them than anything else. I think, I think the concept of the DJ is kind of bruised because, especially in America, because the politics of radio, the, the, the politics of DJs not taking a chance on new shit, they'll only, most of them will only back. Um, um, you know, established artists, it, all of that shit is all of that shit basically, and that so artists are like fuck DJs, and the same way artists are like fuck labels because you never cared about us. So now they're so used to labels not caring, fuck it, we'll do ourselves. Especially grime artists, grime artists are like fuck it, we'll do ourselves. So because they figured out how to do it themselves, and there's an industry now, yeah, Skeptical saying every song, yeah, nobody signed it to labels, and then. With artists, it's like that that direct interaction with fans, and that that's that's like a drug. Like if you put out a new track and the internet goes nuts and it goes on every site and then you know, certain alleged platforms copy and paste in oh da 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 you know like they'll just try and put an angle on it so you go to their page. Well, no, if you follow the artist, you've got the track anyway. <laughs> you know, it's like and I, I think that's 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 the rush. I think that's what they value more. I think, you know, I think um, I'm good because I've built up a good relationship with artists and I've never abused the trust. I've never done some fuckboy shit. Fuckboys do fuckish things, right? I don't, I'm not a fuckboy, I don't do that. So it's built my reputation to the point where, yeah, DJ Kyle doesn't let me into his house, where, you know, Drake will DM me direct to do an interview. No fucking, no manager, no PR, no label, no station. That was straight to me, like, you know. So not every DJ's got that, you know that. I think there's only a couple of people who got that in the game. I think Elliot Wilson's one of them. He's got that. I'm jealous of that Jay-Z interview. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. He's dope. Like, uh, Elliot's the GOAT. Yeah. But, you know, that, for me, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I was trying to get it. I was, try I was trying to do that myself. Like, oh, oh Jay Z doesn't use Twitter, so yeah. You no, 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 no. Waiting for a DM from him, yeah. No. <laughs> Wait. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I put in the work. Like I put. One day I'll explain that I put in the work, but it's cool. Like you know what Elliot did it. Like he's fucking dope. Like I respect the hell out of that guy. You know he's he's one of the people that when I was. On the grind when he was a double XL, I don't even know if he remembers. I just used to turn up the at the office and interview. Yeah. Like, what's your take? What's going on? I'm and sure he does remember. Nah, because he was moody back then. No. <laughs> like he was like the oh, no, editor. Then I, then he, yeah, definitely then he definitely remembers. remembers. And yeah, he was like, yeah. "Who the fuck is this English guy? What? what? <laughs> who, the, who? What? Like so? And you know, I think he, you know, and he always when he I was there when Rap the Vader started. The day it started, I went to interview him. Like I was like, "Yo, so tell me about Rap Vader." Yeah. You know, so he he's like, he's um, and he said like, yeah, I'm here to document the culture, and that that's what I got to do. I was like, that's what I'm doing. You know, I kind of like yeah. reinforced like, um, what my duty is. You know, I did a book. I reached out to Ch I say that so flippant. Yeah, I did a book. So I reached out to Chuck D to do the forward because he, I grew up in his music. And he's, for me, I was like, he's the only guy that means something like that, you know? So he, he referred to me as a generator of generations. I got a duty. I got to do it right. I By the way, that's better than having a big X behind you. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. It's the ultimate cosign. So I've got to treat this culture and this art form with respect. I got to support the new guy as much as the, the current guy, as much as the classic guy. You know, it's, they're all important. And that's, that's what we got to do if you're a DJ. Not yeah. everybody does that. Well, we talked about interviews that have come out. How do you break it to a team to say that an interview is not coming out? I've never done that. Then why isn't there a Lauren Hill interview that we <laughs> are well waiting for? You know why? No, that's what I'm asking. Why? <laughs> right. Because this was in 1997, right? And there was a guy who was like, yo, yo, I'm gonna engineer the session. I shout out to Lika, Lika. He was a victim of this. Like, Why do you think I know this story, by the way? Because <laughs> no, 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 he, he, he came up from Bristol to do the interview. Like, yeah. And then, and that's two and a half hours away, by the way. So, 
So we, we have an amazing evening with Lauren Hill. She does all these interviews, revelations, like, and everything else. So there's this guy who's like, I'm going to record everything. I'm going to engineer the session. And he's there with this equipment and some fucked up mixing board and microphones and all this shit. And recording into mini disc. Now, mini disc. <laughs> right. Now, mini disc. You press record, it records. But if you don't press stop properly, it doesn't finalize. Now, if you don't finalize it, you lose the recording. Uh. We lost four hours worth of audio of Lauren Hill. That's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. So now I don't trust anybody. Now I do everything <laughs> myself. I know. That the, all right. The closest experience to that, I did an interview and I got this thing called a flash mic, where it's like a, it's a mic but with a hard drive built in. Now, always renew the batteries when you're doing an interview. Always, like, <laughs> always carry fresh batteries. Like, <laughs> even if you're five minutes late, buy new batteries, right? So I was doing this interview with someone, like, it might have been Neo or someone or something like that. And I'm there talking to him, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I see the battery run out. I'm like, bastard. Fucking, <laughs> I'm like, I carried on doing the interview. <laughs> you know? I was like, yeah, so tell me about the new album. <laughs> no, full well, the battery had run out. <laughs> I had to do it. I couldn't look like a dick. Like, I wasn't going to be like. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Did you, that, did that, in, that interview never came out. No? It wasn't recorded? The one that was the first recorded didn't come out? Yeah. Um, so we saw you on Twitter last week mm. very vehemently defending radio in 2017. Right. Can you just... You can use this platform just to talk about your beliefs in full. That's just not 140 characters. About radio. About radio. Oh, yeah. There's some article saying radio is dead because of streaming. And I said that because... Well, they said that about CDs... Blu-ray, mini disc, um, game consoles, cinemas, etc. Vinyl, <laughs> yeah. And we know how you feel about vinyl. That's and right. vinyl's probably selling more than you know. Do you still have a garage full of vinyl, by the way? Sold it all. You did? Yeah, because did you buy another house with it? Nah, because no, 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 no. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you know what? You know what happened? Like, um, my son's bedroom was above the garage. Yeah. And I came home one day and I was like, this is a fucking fire hazard. Like, because it's several tons of plastic. Like, if that was just, if there was for some reason, God forbid, a fire was to happen, it's dead. Yeah. So by that time, I switched to CDJs anyway. And then I was kind of getting into Savato. So I was just like, fuck this vinyl. Because I was like, I'd spent years carrying it through airports. Have you ever lost a crate of records? It's like losing a child. Yeah. Like, you, you, you do these gigs abroad, and it's a chance as to whether you get the vinyl out on the other end. So I was just like, fuck vinyl, Well, man. did you lose vinyl ever, ever yeah, like, on those yeah. trips? you lose a crate. Everyone's lost a crate now and then of, like, your best shit. Eric has not lost a crate. I've never lost Yo, a crate. Like, yeah. it's devastating. You'll be waiting at the airport for hours. I just want it back. Yeah. Want it. Like, it's, like, it's like someone's kidnapped your child. Please. Just, I won't say anything. Just, just give it back to me. Like, you know? and, and it's pathetic. And then I, I'm glad to see the back of vinyl. Fuck vinyl, man. Yeah. Like, I, I'm proud to say that. Yeah. Because, no, hold on. Like, yeah. and, then, and then when you're traveling overseas and you're like, yeah, yeah, let me just bring my vinyl. You, you tear up the club like, oh, let me just bring my vinyl. Like, get to the car, you're struggling with crates and shit, falling downstairs of it and everything. <laughs> like, breaking your back. Fuck vinyl, man. <laughs> <laughs> but radio. God bless Savato. Yeah, yeah. No, for everything. No, no, but I'm saying, how do you feel about radio? <laughs> radio? I love radio. Yeah. I think radio was... Um, I, think, I think... I love DJing on radio. Like, I love mixing records. I love talking shit. I love playing new music. I love doing interviews. Everything. Everything about it. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting when you go to other countries and you hear how important it is or it isn't. Like, in, the, in America, you know, when I, when I go to New York, I just walk the streets. Like, any time I get off the plane, I have two or three hours just walking the streets and get the pulse for what's going on. Because mm -hmm. whatever you hear in cars, yep. whatever you hear in stores, shops, and everything else, whether it's Hot 97, Power 105, you, you get a sense of what's going on. Um, and it's... it's, it's you know, and it's the same in LA. Like, I'll make a point to listen to all the stations in LA 
I get I get a kick out of driving around in a cab listening to Cypress Hill and I don't know why <laughs> it just does it for me, you know. And then um, yeah, I think I think it's dope, and I think that, you know there's a place for it, you know, whether people disagree or not. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, can we go? Sorry, over and that guy who was trying to talk to me on Twitter, I don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. Some guy followed me. He follows me, and he feels it's his place to always correct me. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I didn't want to say it. On, uh, I'm trying to be nice out here. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to spaz out on people. I'm not trying to do. I've done Twitter beefs and everything else and all of that. But I'm just like, don't fucking follow me to talk shit and just to prove a point. And I don't even know you. Like, I don't even know what you've done. You haven't done anything. You know. And then you're gonna come at me. I'm like, I, I'm not even gonna say his name because it's not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> do you? You don't block people. Yeah, I do. You do, but yeah, you didn't yeah. block him. Yeah, I did. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, can we talk about some DJs and, and um, radio personalities just to get your honest thoughts on them? Hmm. DJ Khaled. He's great. Well, he's the best. Uh, he is the best. No, yeah. he, he yeah. you know, and I, that, 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 that same guy was getting at me like, how can you say DJ Khaled's great? The, the meaning of great is more than good. He's more than good. I mean, God bless DJ Khaled, right? In a time when the world's going to shit, there's hurricanes, there's floods, nuclear bombs about to drop, DJ Khaled is the most positive guy out there. He's online hugging his son. He's, on he's online proud to be a father. Forget the music accomplishments and making bangers and you know, tearing up clubs and everything else that he's done and making you know, records that I've played for years. Like, just as a father, man, he's, he's putting out that imagery daily, not daily, hourly, of like loving his son. Yeah. That's a great thing. That's fucking amazing. I don't think men do it enough. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. dope. Um, Tim Westwood. Tim is the pioneer. Like, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for what Tim did. Like, a lot of people, yeah, but Tim, like, we've got beef. I'm cool with Tim. I've got nothing but respect for him. We've, you know, we've disagreed at some points, but he's helped me out. Like, there's been moments where he's put me on when I was doing the book. He's one of the first people I reached out to. And, you know, because I was saying, you, I know what he's done. He changed the game out here. He forced labels to recognize that there's a value to this music. You know, he got the first show on Radio 1, opened the door to One Extra and everything else. So he's a pioneer. Do you subscribe to uh, YouTube.com slash Tim Westwood TV? <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> um, Richard Blackwood. <laughs> Richard Blackwood, he's in these standards now, right? Yeah. Big up Richard Blackwood. <laughs> I am a huge fan of Get With the Wicked. That's right. As we all know. Big song. Yeah. Big tune. So, how much can we pay? How much do we have to pay you to play that every hour on the hour? <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, bro, you come in with that crazy talk. Oh, wow. all right, you're going to do it for free. It's I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, you're good, good, good. I don't do payola. I don't uh, do that <laughs> shit, man. Uh, Funkmaster Flex. Funkmaster Flex. Mm. Now, he, he, he changed the game, right? When Tim got his Radio 1 show and he did the New York Exchange, that shit was fucking amazing. And then hearing Flex cut up tracks, the way that he used to cut up tracks, you'd expect to hear that in a club, mixed that way. Like, we expect to hear Mad Lion cut up into Channel Live or the Get Down remix, chops, like, copious amounts of juggles and all of that shit, back and forth. That, you, you, wanted, you wanted to go to a club and hear it cut up in the exact same way. Um, I don't know... I don't, I don't know what happened. I just wish he still did that. And I just wish he still mixed like, mix like that. Because I, I, love, I love seeing DJs mix. Like, there's a guy, there's a guy, I love what's going on on Instagram right now. Like, you got people doing scratchograms and everything else. There's a guy called Scratch Bastard. That shit's inspiring to me. Like, what he did with Humble, the routine that he did. Have you seen it? Mm -mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. No. You should look it up. Like, Scratch Bastard, he does this thing where he cuts up the bit, I'm so fucking sick, like, kills it. That, that shit, that shit makes me want to go back and practice. Yeah, shout out to A-Track, by the way, who's doing a whole, like, yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, Goldie yeah. Awards around yeah. scratch battles and all yeah, that, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you, um, top British rapper out right now, my vote is for the guy who does Man's Not Hot. 
<laughs> What's that? You don't know the man's not hot guy? What? Man's not hot. Say that again. Man's not hot. What? Hot. Man's hot? a hot. No, sorry. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean Michael? Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. I'm not on yeah. a first name basis with him. He might, he might, he might, he might have the biggest hit of the year. Yeah. Like, seriously, that's like, you know, that shit's going to tear down waves. That shit's going to pop off on Spotify. He's got a hit with that. Like, and that's, that's the beautiful thing because, you know, with this game, you never know where it's going to come from. You know, and there's going to be some people right now listening who are like, fuck you, Santex, saying that that's going to be a hit. That's not real hip hop. That's not UK rap. That's not a rapper. That's a comedian. The fuck are you talking? I don't care. It is. I'm going to play that in a rave. I'm going to tear up waves of that. I'm going to play it on my show. Like, it is what it is. Do you have any good um, Dizzy Rascal touring stories that you can share? Um, yeah. Thank God. Nice. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> great. great. That was a very pregnant Wonderful. pause. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you just said no. What do, you, what do we follow that up with? Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> nah, it was, it was, you know, every show was dope. It was, it was dope. We were like, yeah, we're doing a festival in Finland. We had no idea what was going on. Just turn up, like, and turn up on stage and fuck it up. Like, we were just going to all of these places. The best one was when we did the South American tour. We did Brazil... Um, Chile, Argentina. It's fucking amazing, man. Like, yeah. to, to go on the road with your friends, tear up shows, get an amazing response every night, and it's British, it's pioneering British music. That, that, was, that was shit no one else w won't do for a long time because this was, the, this was the guy who started grinding with Wiley. This is the guy who had the genre-defining grind album, you know, and we're touring it. It was like... It's amazing, you know. So, stories. Uh, I, d I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you know, every life was amazing. Like, no, nah, it was cool. Like, you know. Um, we can wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, every night. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's cool because nah, there's nothing I can reveal. Yeah. There's, I can't. There's nothing. There's nothing that. No, nah, there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, we party hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, we. We'd... There's one time. Right, there's one time, right? <laughs> I'm glad we waited. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I, I, I can't even tell you. Like, you know, nearly 10 years ago when you first emailed us and you wanted to make, you know, a collaboration happen, we were honored and, and thrilled. And um, and here we are 10 years later in, in your city, you know, and, and all these years later after after you were a young man who left Manchester to come here and, and take this town, you really did. So. Yeah, and you're still a young man. That's right. Yeah. And you didn't have to DM me. No, we didn't have to DM you. Yeah. <laughs> guys. Yeah, email address. Guys. You, you were showing sure, sure me when I said text email. <laughs> guys, give it up one time for a real legend. A real hero for this country. DJ Sentex one time. We also wanted to make mention that we have a few people that we wanted to thank. Um, all you guys for coming out tonight. Yeah, obviously. thank you guys. Give it up for you guys. Appreciate you. I want to thank the people at Hoxton Square Bar and Kitchen. Yes. I want to thank Project Hirsch. Yes. I want to thank Raj Kotechka. Yes. I want to thank One Globe um, Studio. Yeah. Right? Shout out to them. I want to thank um, William. Kate, Violet, yep. um, and the other two. Yep. I want to thank the good people at Nando's who, yeah. uh, who, who have we haven't this. met yet. No, I know, but they know. Yeah. They know. Can I thank some people? Yeah, of course, please. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank um, the haters. 
Yeah. Talk about Isn't it. Isn't that always the best? Talk yeah. about it, Sam. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to thank anybody that ever told me I couldn't do something. Thank you. Yeah. yeah that was nice. I appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank God. You know, yeah. I'm still alive. Yeah. So I'd like to do that. My family. Um, and, you know, yay. Thank yes. Because I got to do eight interviews with him. No one's done that. I've done four interviews with Jay-Z. Probably only Tim's done that in this country. You know? And then with Drake. Thank you to artists. Thank you to hip hop. Thank you to the DJ. I'm taking a piss now. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, thank you to Dame Dash, who was good enough to pass some vinyl along to our man Sam. All right. Give it up one time for Dame Dash. <laughs> Yo, guys, one more time for CJ Semtex. Yeah.